All right, guys. I'm having a really great Saturday morning because I just went on a gravy run and any Saturday morning that starts that way can't end bad. See, we've got a few friends coming over right now because a few weeks ago, actually, I'll just show you. So we ordered this 10 foot whiteboard because whiteboards are sexy, right? And we forgot that I live on the eighth floor. Show me how big it is. You think it's big enough, Thomas? I think it's like my arms across it. We just gotta make it all the way down there. Bro, we forgot the tacos in the booze. <laughs> So right over here is the wall where everything's gonna go, where we're gonna hang that massive whiteboard. And so I have some friends coming over to help me out because I'm not the handiest person. And I wanna tell you more about why on earth we're doing this. But first, brunch. Answers to your questions, but you should know that I have questions of my own. Like could you not, and do you mind? Cause all your words do is remind me that I'm forever Understand, you're just trying to be helpful when you say it'll happen someday. See, that's one thing you can't guarantee. Cause not everything in life is meant to be, so I'll stay forever alone. You act like it's not for a lack of trying. That I've been shooting too high or out of my league. And just because of So I know that footage was a little heavy on the brunch and a little light on the actual setting up of the whiteboard, but one, I wanted you guys to see how we bribed people into helping us hang this beast. Two, I forgot to hit record on the camera, and so the only footage that we actually got of the actual setup was from Kate's iPhone. Thank you, Kate, for being smarter than I am. The truth is, this whiteboard is the next step in a long lesson that we've been learning over the last year and a half. See, when we moved into this space, it was because I was absolutely tired of not having a place that I felt like I could be creative in. I was tired of coming home and kicking off my shoes and feeling like everything was maximized for my comfort. I felt like if we moved into a space where I had more room for my things, where I could write music over there and I could sit and edit videos over here, that would boost some kind of natural inspiration in me and creativity. The truth is when we moved into this space, I had a little boost of creativity and it lasted me for about three weeks before I got just as comfortable falling into my same routines that I did in the last spot that we were in. So right now, I wanna boil down into one sentence a lesson that it's taken me a year and a half to learn. If you wanna be a productive artist, you are going to have to make the decision daily to prioritize your creativity over your comfort. This whiteboard behind me represents a daily decision that we've decided to make. We've decided this isn't a dining room, this is a launching pad for ideas. We're gonna prioritize brainstorming sessions over dinner parties and meetups over game night. Now, what I'm not saying is canceled game night, don't go to dinner parties and buy a giant whiteboard. What I am saying is right now, before you pack your things up and move to some place that you think will be more inspirational, make the daily decisions to look at your routine and tweak what you need to to prioritize your creativity over your comfort. From the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, how many seconds are you wasting? Time is our most valuable resource and we treat it like it's our most expendable, especially in the creative community. We take long walks and we wait for inspiration to hit, but I'm telling you right now, your favorite photographers, videographers, painters, songwriters, poets, writers, they didn't create what they created because inspiration struck them in the moment. They created masterworks because they made the daily decision to choose their creativity over their comfort. If any of this is resonating with you and you're anything like me, this is gonna pump you up for about a week and a half before you slip back into the same habits. So if I can give you one simple actionable item, go buy this book. Like right now, take out your phone, get on Amazon, it's like $8 and you don't need that 32 back of batteries. I know that it's a deal, but this is more important. 
This book is chock full of simple, easy to read and digest tips and tricks for a creative person to take hold of their day again and actually begin being productive. I'm not lying to you. I keep at least two or three copies of this on me at all times so that I can give them away to people who are struggling with the things that I struggle with daily. My wife is legit annoyed at how much money I've spent on this book that I just give away. So with that, a few weeks ago, Amy actually sat down with some of our artists at our last event to talk to them about everything from their creative process to what their favorite taco joint is. So I'm gonna hand it over to her and I'm gonna go start filling this whiteboard up. Modern Electric with the one and only Remy Riley. Hi everyone, this is Stacey and we're here at Modern Electric. Hi everyone, I am with Becky... I want to say Mecky Biddleton. <laughs> I am with uh, Mecky Biddleton and Neb. This is Tacos and Tunes and I am here with Becky Middleton and Ben. Tell us a little bit about your genre, how old you are. Um, I am a indie pop jazz artist. I'm 14 years old and I've been doing this for not very long. <laughs> Maybe about two years now. So I sing everything for a lot of different people, but my style is very soulful, singer songwriter. Okay, so I don't have like a typical upbringing with like a lot of American influences, and so everyone like throwbacks, and they're like, "I love this throwback," and I'm like, I've "Never heard it before. I'm just a little Indian girl." <laughs> um, I grew up listening to a mix of like Bollywood and um, different international music. And who would you say is your artist influence? My biggest influence is a girl called Zizi Ward. She's Ooh. really cool and literally everything I want to be. Like, yeah. she's a songwriter, she's bluesy, and all that good stuff that I want yeah. to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, Adele's like someone I enjoy in the current, but Aretha for sure, like I grew up on her, so yeah. Yes. I love you, Aretha. Yes. I was 90s baby, so I loved, you know, Beyonce and... Oh, uh, I think 90s artists go. Oh, I mean, does Beyonce qualify? She has to, she's like... Destiny Chow. Just like, Destiny. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, because you were like, who, but who's that girl? Favorite taco place. And what oh. do you get? I love All velvet time. tacos. Velvet. I get the vegetarian. Oh, are you vegetarian? No, but. Dang it! <laughs> I will turn you. <laughs> velvet taco. I love it. Two for two. Ah! I get the uh, the chicken, the rotisserie chicken. And it's so good. And oh my gosh. I knew you were going to hit me with taco question. I was not prepared for this. Do you not eat tacos? <laughs> we have to go. <laughs> <laughs> Tacos. What was yeah. the question? I don't know. I, you really broke my heart. I don't want to. <laughs> Do you make the tacos? <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> Wait! I would be white because, um, what? Ocean blue. <laughs> Turquoise. Like just in between those two colors that you're not sure you want to pick. I come from a third world country. I wanted to start like music um, initiatives. I would, I would pay off my debt and then I'd help my family. <laughs> I'd spend it on dogs. Oh, I think, man, I can't drive yet. <laughs> um, how stupid boys are. I think about songwriting, actually, yeah. I'd be a dog. <laughs> Dolphin. There's just like free and fun loving. I would be a hedgehog because they're um, cute, but they're also, they also have boundaries because they're prickly. Yum. Cheery. It's very happy. 